Here we are, Saturday afternoon, the home of live sport across the south. Every Cherries game, home and away, on BBC Radio Solent. It's Nottingham Forest against the ball uh, against Bournemouth. You can hear it on FM across Dorset. That's 103.8 FM digital radio, and also Freeview Channel 726, and via the AFC TV audio service as well. Cherries all in black. They're kicking from right to left, away from the end of the ground where their own fans are in this first half. And having had Anthony Taylor in the middle in midweek, we've probably got the best Premier League referee this afternoon. Michael Oliver's in charge. Here's Dom Solanke, right-hand side for the Cherries, breaking forward already into the penalty area. And again, as is often the case with the Cherries this season so far, the final product wasn't there, with three herring up to join him. The ball was behind Ryan Christie, Willow. Yeah, that was, that was definitely in the previous game, something that we have to get better at. Our final pass... Lovely, Forest. lovely turn from Nico Williams away from Tavernier, but it was well pinched back by the Cherries and Lewis Cook driving through the midfield, out to the left and to the former Middlesbrough man Tavernier again. Halfway inside the Forest half of the field, but Jordan Zamora arriving at pace to help out. It functionally ran away from him, and a Nottingham Forest throw inside the run half. Yeah, Tavernier, they just need to get under control. Jordan had made an absolutely blistering run down the left to go round him and. Yeah, he just fired into his feet, he couldn't control it. Well, we know Steve Cooper has his favourite three at the back formation with two strikers. Gary O'Neill resisting the urge to match up with that today as it's played down the right by Nico Williams again, looking for Brennan Johnson, but that goes all the way through to Neto. Again, in his light grey goalkeeping kit, defending the goal away to our right. And Cherry's having at the back with Chris Meffert. Earlier in the Premier League, the Merseyside derby finished Everton nil. Liverpool nil, as that's charged down inside the Cherry half for a throw-in on the far right side. Everton did have a second-half goal chalked off for offside in that game, which uh, pro prompted John Williams nearly to vomit when he heard about that to my <laughs> left. VAR doing Everton today. I'd rather we won this one, I'll tell you. Cherries are just defending by their own corner flag at the minute, as Adam Smith and Chris Meppham couldn't find a way out. Forrest win a throw-in over in that far right corner as we look, which is the Forest left just around where the uh, Cherry supporters are in the lower tier, covering the left half of the field as we look at it. Well, the Forest left wing, Cherries are still battling away, and it's another Forest throw over on that far side, which Renan Lodi, the 27 million rated Brazilian defender, on loan from Atletico Madrid, will take over on that far side. Forest, of course, in their traditional colours of red, white and red. Taken short in the end by Lodi, out to that far side where Gibbs White is dispossessed by Lewis Cook and it'll be another forest throw as they continue to house themselves in that far left corner a little ball around the corner there Lingard helps it on looking for the run of Gibbs White again Lodi lost it and it's cleared away by Lewis Cook up towards halfway where a giant figure of Cheku Kriate in the centre of midfield the former West Ham and Crystal Palace man who as I said earlier did play centre half against Manchester City they conceded six so they put him back into midfield today but that was a relief for him yeah Long diagonal ball by Dean Henderson has got Forrest away down the left-hand side. Adam Smith has had a little tug back there. Oh, he's going to get booked. Renan Lodi in the very early stages. I think Michael Oliver is going to let him off. Good. Just a free kick. As we look at it, oh, Adam Smith's got to be careful. That's what I've, I've seen him booked for less than that, I think. Yeah, I think I have as well. Well, he did exactly the same the other day, didn't he? It was Chris Meffham, wasn't it, who was in the very early stages of the game, also let off one by Anthony Taylor. So Forrest free kick over on the far side there, left. Halfway inside the Bournemouth half of the field. Morgan Gibbs White stands over it. A big set of halves are forward from the back. Steve Cook, who switched to his Cherries number, number three for Forrest this season, on his back. Deep to the back post where Roll comes in unseen, heads it against the back of Phil Billing, despite some handball shouts from the Forest supporters. And Bournemouth have got it away up to halfway. Do, but do you know, we had three Forest players on the far post against one. I, I know they're trying to mark different areas, but that, that's just you're just outnumbered. And two of the three that were free, well, they were centre-halves. So if you're keeping an eye on anybody at set-pieces, keep an eye on them. Well, we've seen it from corners as well. Yeah, Steve Cooper's side are pretty profitable from set-plays as well. Looking at the numbers from last season, as Bournemouth on the defensive again at the moment. Four minutes gone here at the city ground. Forest nil, Cherries nil. Other offerings today, Wolves against Southampton and Pompey Peterborough. Here goes Brennan Johnson into the penalty for Forrest. Shot at goal is blocked away by his Welsh international colleague Chris Meppham. And it's out for a Forrest throw towards the corner flag again. Yeah, Me Meppham's in so good form at the moment. Nico Williams with a throw down the right side of the box for Forrest here. Gets it back. His shirt number is seven, the right wing back. 
deep one from him towards the back stick where Lodi is coming in, nods it down to the six yard box. Mepham again was there to chest it down and hook it away. Breaks in the centre of midfield, nodded back forward in there by McKenna who stayed forward and the Cherries win a free kick as Solanke has flipped halfway inside his own half. Done well there, Dominic. Couldn't do a lot else with it, just tried to hold the ball up and you have to say his ball is a, a free kick. Well, Sean Cooper, there's a lot of Coopers on the touchline today. Steve in the Forest technical area. Sean, of course, temporarily assisting Gary O'Neill. Was already, after five minutes, will come rushing out to have a word in Gary O'Neill's ear, Sean Cooper. Yeah. What well, about Tommy Cooper, is he there? I don't believe he is, but we've got Tommy Elphick. So there's a chance I could call him Tommy Cooper if I get really confused later on. Ball back with the Cherries at the moment. It's with their goalkeeper Neto, fed back by Mepham. Cherries, of course, looking to run at, end a run of four Premier League games without scoring today since the opening day of the season. Tom Solanke, big shout to handball. I think certainly that probably was the correct call from Michael Oliver. Uh, yeah, it was handball. Yeah. I think the crowd got it though. Forest fans just getting a bit uh, aggy there about Cherries taking the ball away from where the free kick should be taken as Ryan Yates, one of Forest's long-serving youth products. Who's, uh, it's good to see some of the regulars from last season anyway keeping their places despite the influx of players. It's not many though, is there? Too many. No, the, the back three were all here last season. Ryan Yates in midfield, Johnson obviously up top was here last season, but quite a few of the others have made way, including Sam Surridge, who played a big role last season, popular with the fans here, not even in the squad today. We've also got a couple of uh, expensive defenders still to come back. Nia Carte from Mites, who they paid 15 million quid for. He's injured for another few weeks. Mangala as well, Omar Richards, other big million pound, multi-million pound signings who are not fit. As that goes out of play, a filling right down underneath us for a forest throw at halfway. Yeah, it was a bit short right from the start, that throw in from Zamora. Billings didn't really protect him. Ball back with Joe Worrell, the forest captain, another one of their long serving players. A shock of blonde hair, the captain's armband on his left arm, long sleeve forest shirt. And Steve Cook carries it up to halfway, knocks it into the between the lines where Gibbs White lost it under pressure from. Ryan Christie over on that far side, Lerma put his teammate Billing under pressure from Kuate, and now it's Morgan Gibbs-White again, lays it off to Brennan Johnson, halfway inside the Cherries are. They move it over to the left-hand side where Lodi continues to get forward, nudges it down the left side of the box, Johnson held up by the Cherries, back it goes once again to the halfway line, and McKenna, who scored in this fixture last year, which was the second game of last season, as Koyate knocks it over the top again, looking for the run of Gibbs-White, who seemed to push Chris Meppham, and that was spotted by the, goal, uh, the referee, Michael Oliver, and Bournemouth get a free kick in their own box. Yeah, he, he just give him a little nudge in the back, enough to put Meps off. Again, good position, got in between him and the goalkeeper. Well, 46-game season last year, Willow, the two times these two sides played each other, they were 44 games apart. They played each other in the second game of the season, and the second last game of the season. Wow. Because of the storm damage to the stadium, of course, which delayed it oh, earlier yeah, on. Storm damage. Ball not really cleared by the Cherries there. They want a handball against Lloyd Kelly as Brennan Johnson went through the inside right channel, but the officials saw nothing, and Zamora brings it away and actually wins a free kick there as Johnson clips him out by the corner flag. And this has been a testing first eight minutes, as you probably thought it would be with the intensity they do build up here at the city ground. Many times we've done okay, though. Nothing on toward. Nothing getting in behind us, which is always something you look look at early on. Can we get up the pitch a bit more now? Well, Kelly, the skipper, has it. They're just joining us, unchanged, the Cherries from midweek. They're in their all-black third kit. We haven't seen the Hawaiian kit yet this season, the new blue one that fans helped to design. Thought we might see it today, but we haven't. As Worrell beats Solanke easily in the air, then Billing clips the heels of Ryan Yates inside the forest staff. Been a lot of free kicks already, really. Yes, there are. I mean, that one was just a case of right in front of the referee, so you're not going to get away with it. Well, I just had a goal coming through from producer Tom, but he wasn't very loud, so I'm going to speak a little bit louder up against the, uh, the loud noise here. Pause with nil, Peterborough 1 is the latest score from Fratton Park through Jack Marriott. Here, Forest nil, Bournemouth nil in the Premier League on our Dorset frequencies and AFCB's audio service. Up over the halfway line come Forest again, and given away, though, poorly there by Nico Williams, and Dom Solanke has it. Driving up to the halfway line with Christie to the right of the centre circle, but Christie's already got two red shirts around him, but Kiate clips his heels and Bournemouth get a free kick. Yeah, Dominic did well initially to hold the ball up. I think Christie was always on a loop. Ooh, can he get... No, we'll get that. Long ball for Tavernier, too strong through the goalkeeper, Henderson. Yeah, just tried to take a quick one, catch them napping. I think the space was there, but just overhit. 
lot of talk about shirt sponsorship these days, Willow, and gambling companies. Bournemouth obviously moved to a, a Far Eastern gambling company this year, which I know didn't go down well with everybody. Forest don't have a sponsor on their shirt. Sometimes people rent it to charities and things or give the money away some other... Uh, some other how as the ball goes back to Henderson. Well, it's just that the Maranakis ownership here, they didn't feel they got an offer high enough for sponsors, so they said, well, we won't have one. If Smithy go forward. Here comes Adam Smith. We'll come back to that right hand side of the penalty area. Adam Smith is 25 yards from goal, drives it towards the penalty area. Three Forest players again there to close it down. And cleared only as far as Lerma, who picks it up halfway inside the Forest half for Bournemouth in space. Nowhere for him to go really forward. And it's back to halfway again. And the Cherries build from the back with Lloyd Kelly. Yeah, I've seen that programme you were talking about, or it was a clip, wasn't it, of, you know, teams that have gambling stuff on their, on their shirts. Yeah. It's very brave of Forrest, both financially and... Here's Tavernier away down the left-hand side. It was blocked off by Worrell there, he was just a little bit stronger. Yeah, he just got in his path, didn't he? The fact they spent £140 million on players, will I suggest they're not short of a bob, as Dean Henderson clears it away. But, yeah, the exposure you can get from being a Premier League shirt sponsor, Forrest have an inflated view of what they were offering companies. As Forrest get an advantage played in their favour over the halfway line. Gibbs White is fouled then by Lewis Cook. That might be a yellow card. Certainly there's got to be a contender eventually from one of the Bournemouth players stopping a Forrest attack that there would be a, a pretty good case for a yellow card. Lewis Cook, the latest to transgress Well, I'm there. going with Lewis on that one. I think he made a, 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 a lot of it, the, the Forrest player. Uh, he's definitely, it's a foul, there's a push and a shove there, but I, I don't think it was as bad as he made it look. Well, just a free kick, nothing doing in the yellow card stakes again. 11 and a half minutes played on BBC Radio Solent, Nottingham Forest nil, Bournemouth nil, as it's out to Minico Williams on this near right side for Forest. Get a little chase down the right side of the box there between Kelly and Johnson, and Brennan Johnson nudges Lloyd Kelly as he went to clear the ball, and Kelly can only knock it sideways and out for a throw-in down by the corner yeah, to the right. Kelly to get his body in between better a throw in than a corner Steve Cooper a moment ago Willow I'll come back to this in a second actually because Forrester on the attack down the right hand side with Nico Williams trying to squeeze it through a very congested area down by the corner flag and then Jordan Zamora wins a throw for the Cherries Steve Cooper's dressed all in black right out on the edge of the touchline uh, and Cherries of course are playing in black Willow so a moment ago Steve Cooper was throwing a blue Forest tracksuit top to put on which he threw back to someone and now he's been told to put it round his round his waist or something to try and distinguish him from the Cherries players interesting it's too hot. you have to wear dark glasses as well <laughs> it's too hot for a tracksuit top if you ask me so he's he's put it round his waist so that he's not dressed the same as the Cherries players nice tactics though from Steve Cooper dressed the same as the opposition I like yeah, that just good dark hearts skinny in the ball is back with Forrest on this near right-hand side, level with the edge of the Cherries penalty area. No goals between Wolves and Southampton. In our other Premier League game, there's a poor touch there from Brennan Johnson from Forrest throw, and Bournemouth get a cheap goal kick and an opportunity to get themselves forward. Nothing doing really in the attacking states no. so far. Goalkeepers nil, I would think. Well, they've had the fewest shots, the fewest shots on target and the lowest expected goals of anybody in the Premier League so far again. All of those numbers at the moment come with the proviso that three of their first five games have been against the big six. But, certainly against Wolves, there still wasn't a whole host of things to talk about going forward. As Neto, the Terry's keeper, clears up over halfway. Not quite sure who the intended target was. No, but I'm not. Neither. And they took so long over it, like it was deliberate. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a couple of bookings over the last couple of games where we've got done for taking too long. Not necessarily for time wasting, although the opposition will be saying it is, but... I just think they take a long time for some reason. Cherries have got it on the halfway line from that uh, wayward goal kick a moment ago. And it's back with Lloyd Kelly, the Cherries captain at the heart of the defence. Forward up over halfway. Nice little work, bit of work from Jefferson Lerma, who gets away from Nico Williams. Down the left-hand side. Lerma acting as left winger at the moment, and then tried to roll some sort of ball down the side of the box. Comes back to Zamora. Think about a shot on his right foot, then will drive on his left. Clips it to the back post. Nobody there, everyone had come short. Tavernier was five yards away, why didn't he just roll it into his path, he could have struck. And Jefferson Lerma, as Forrest have it at the back at the moment, Jefferson Lerma was almost too cute, wasn't he, with his ball down oh, the left-hand side. Was, yeah. well, that's good work at the back, oh no, it's a foul by Ryan Christie on loaded. free kick Forrest in their own half. Taking quickly. Forrest down this near right-hand side now with Nico Williams once more, who was an £18 million signing from Liverpool, 21 years of age. Only one Premier League appearance for Liverpool last season. 
very much in the Nat Phillips kind of mould and that one of the young, younger players, or Phillips is a bit older, but one of the fringe players that Liverpool had to decide on their future as Lloyd Kelly does a nice turn chased back by Brennan Johnson towards his own byline and, for, and Bournemouth have it with Zamora. Down the line he comes looking for the run of Tavernier, but it's out of play from Forrest in the end of a Forrest boot. And Cherries have another throw in, near side the left. Nil-nil the score as we hit the quarter out. Yeah, you'd have to say both teams are not quite finding the passing routines they would like. We've been a little bit more dangerous on the break with that one from Lerma. All of these kind of games are going to take on big importance, aren't they, this season? And both teams know this is a good opportunity Oops. today. A little bit of a uh, coming together there between Solanke and Worrell. The play continues. Forest certainly having had a, they had a, a few tough games themselves, to be fair. They've had Manchester City, Newcastle, Spurs in their first five games. They've had some difficult games as well. As Zamora is laid off by Solanke now, halfway inside the Forest half. Zamora's mazy run came to win the end in the uh, challenge of Criate, and then a clever free kick won by Lerma towards the touchline as he was going nowhere. So clever, isn't it? Just put his leg there and wait for it to be taken away. So free kick to the Cherries, which from just over the halfway line, they're not sending anyone forward from the back for this one. Oh no. As Lingard uh, tries to stand on top of the ball. Not about free transfer, is he, Jesse Lingard, if he could afford his wages? Yeah. I'm sure he was going to West Ham at one stage. Oh, he had a loan spell there, of course, and was popular there. But an early capture in the window for Forrest as Lloyd Kelly plays the ball down the left hand side. Solanke holds off Worrell this time. Left side of the penalty area, waiting for support, gets it from Tavernier down the left hand side. Tavernier's cross into the box, was half blocked by Williams, and well dealt with in the end by Forrest. And Worrell clears it away over the halfway line where Lloyd Kelly will just about keep it in play. That's brilliant, absolutely top draw. Headed it down and then got it under control, Lloyd Kelly. And here's Zamora heading towards the Forrest penalty area from right to left, back from Billing to Lerma. Halfway inside Forest territory, Lerma's ball into the feet of Solanke, but it pings straight back under close attention from Steve Cook. Here's Lewis Cook, forward to Solanke, 30 yards out, little ball to the right, Christie, nicely built up, now Billing, still 30 yards out, Cherries, knock it down the left side of the box, and Tavernier, Zamora in support. John Williams is waving that he should have used Zamora. Oh, Zamora made a great run. Here's Christie again, top of the box, turning away from one, but immediately closed down by Kiate. Zamora, left corner of the penalty area, Cherries are in and around the box without making that final killer pass at the moment. Now Zamora goes along the top of the box, plays it into Solanke, tries to find Billing. Too many red shirts back there, cleared away by Forrest, and now a chance for Lingard to break. Up over the halfway line, left of centre, pursued by Adam Smith. There's some nice interplay there from the Cherries, but no product. Crossfield ball from Lingard, out to this right-hand side, and Brennan Johnson, faced by Lloyd Kelly. Red shirts arriving in the box, Johnson's cross is a good one. Lingard was arriving, Lewis Crook did enough. Tracked his man all the way, first quarter of the game to Forrest on the right. Well, the other end of the pitch, we had 10-plus passes around the edge of the area, and I think three of them passes could have become shots. Yeah, it was all a bit too intricate, wasn't it? A bit too patient. 18 was... yards out at times, there was throw, throw a leg at it. Well, Lewis Crick was one of the Cherry standout players in midweek, and he tracked his runner, Lingard, all the way there as that Forest attack broke and Lewis Cook cleared it away from in the penalty area. Gibbs White with a corner for Forest on this near side. Nil-nil with 18 minutes played on BBC Radio Solon. In it comes to the near post and Gibbs White it wasn't great. Cleared by Christie and then Nico Williams shanks his shot. Well, it was a good bad one, Well, open the corner. Didn't beat the first man, but nearly ended in a... Well, it did end in a shooting chance for Nico Williams, which he executed poorly. Yeah, Christie did his job, you know, he's there to hold anything that goes across that near post. See, here we go again now. Already, the crowd are on our case for taking too long. Cherries have got Neto taking the kick from the centre of the six-yard box. He's got centre-halves oh, to his left and right. Me. Neto takes one little faint run-up and then eventually clips it up to halfway where Billing jumps with Yates. Billing didn't know where the ball had bounced and now here are Forrest. They've turned it over quickly. Lingard, 25 yards out. Lingard shoots, blocked by Mepham in the penalty area with Lodi to the left, screaming for the ball. He might get it now, but there's Lewis Cook again, back defending. Where's he going towards his own corner flag? Lewis Cook in the end, a lovely cheeky little ball up to Adam Smith and the Cherries can escape. Referee plays advantage after a foul by Solanke. Yeah, great work by Cook there. I don't know how he's got out of that mess. Well, he's already in the last couple of games, Lewis Cook, in that sort of sitting number six role, joint number six with Jefferson Lerma, doing a good role, doing a good role screening the centre-halves. Nil-nil here, nil-nil at Molyneux between Wolves and Southampton as the ball comes in from the left for Forrest. Deep cross to the back post, Zamora lets it bounce, in comes Williams, and Zamora just gets a glance off the top of his dreadlocked hair. Runs out to the Welsh international, Williams once again though. 
short ball to Yates. All of this is tight to the right touchline for Forrest as they attack from left to right, but the crowd not, not, not enamoured to see Forrest going backwards into their own half. No, no, no. And he just sensed it in the centre half. He was going to go back to the keeper. The crowd got onto him and he's on the old munch and turn back. Knocked it sideways to Steve Cook, who's playing in the centre of the back three, the Cherries' record Premier League appearance maker. Adam Smith should go past him this season, all being well with Adam Smith's fitness. Forrest have it. Smith is uh, 19 appearances behind Steve Cook in the Cherries' Premier League appearance stakes. Adam Smith is playing his 150th game in the Premier League today. It's 149th for the Cherries, one for Spurs. Lerma has it for the Cherries, 0-0. We've played 20 minutes. John Williams, the ball, former Bournemouth defender and assistant manager, is alongside me. And Forest pressure all over the pitch at the moment. Isn't just allowing Bournemouth to get too much moving. And when they have got it moving down the field, they've messed about with it a little bit too long. Yeah, there's not a lot to report in terms of goal chances. Um, you would say it's fairly even. Perhaps just goes ahead on points because of that passing sequence we had earlier. That might be a bit bias but <laughs> Forest fans trying to get behind their team now yeah, I think Forest fans will probably have them just ahead on points at the moment as the ball is with Yates for Forest in the cherry half of the field, Chiate playing with a white protective bandage on his right hand, lovely little bit of footwork there by Gibbs White to find Williams, clipped to the edge of the cherry's box, headed away by Kelly for the men in black, and now a little one-two between Zamora and Tavernia, and Zamora breaks the challenge of Chiate who rather launched himself in and now he's billing to the left-hand side, Tavernier, Christie at the back post trying to get himself involved, Billing continues oh. his run, not a good ball by Tavernier, over hit, and through to Henderson, the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was just a little bit of mindset, let us down there. Here come Forrest again with Gibbs-White, out towards this near right side, and Brennan Johnson once more, game swinging from end to end, it has been entertaining, but without any real product, and that one is equally poor from Johnson as he finds the Cherries keeper Neto. Well, you have to say, there was nobody in the box, it was a good break, he got himself in a good position, but he had to turn backwards. Sean Cooper once again, the Cherries acting assistant manager, coming out to the edge of the technical area with Gary O'Neill, doing a bit of pointing and uh, shouting between each other. It's a very big technical area here, it's probably, what, five metres long? It's like a tennis court. Yeah, it is. It is about five metres long and probably about 15 metres wide. So Gary O'Neill has to uh, catch a bus to get back to his, the rest of his coaching staff on the... Plastic long bench is one long line of benching with a red plastic plastic cover protecting them from no elements today. As Solanke has it on the halfway line over on the far side. Nearly a quarter of the game gone, goalless at the city ground. Remember Ron Atkinson sat in the wrong dugouts when he became manager yeah, I do here. Remember that, yeah. Long ball across the field from the Cherries inside the Forest half, but a weak header away from Nico Williams, and it's picked up loose by Zamora. Now wide on the left with Marcus Tavernier in the black of Bournemouth. Back in field to Lerma. And Cherries again, nowhere to go as Forrest get their defensive structure organised and they'll switch it over to the far side in the bright green booted Adam Smith. Ten yards over halfway, far side of the Cherries right. Sees an opportunity to find Lewis Cook and the Cherries try and move Forrest from side to side. Gary O'Neill's waving Zamora forward, drives it into the box, but again the final delivery is not giving Solanke a chance and it goes all the way through for a goal kick over by the corner flag. Forrest player down, yeah, Solanke was a one-hit wonder if he didn't pick him out. Nobody else was there, just hit it too much. I'm going to see a change, actually, Willow, already. I've just seen Lewis O'Brien go running down the tunnel with his number 14 Forest shirt in his hand. Kuyate as the player sat down. So Forest are going to have to make a tactical change here, just a quarter of the way through the game. And if there's any positive, Willow, it means I will be able to write something down on my paper because I haven't really got anything to note down yet. So Forest, a lot of movement among their coaching staff. Two or three of them now have been looking at the laptop. Fourth official. Matt Donoghue is getting himself ready with the board. Cherries have come across for a drink. It's an impromptu drinks break halfway through the first half. Did you get that Yates shot into the second tier of the stand? Is <laughs> that worth No, I'm not, I'm not really. I'm not, I mean, that's a shot off target, isn't it? With, yeah, borderline, that one. It was so poor. So here comes Lewis O'Brien to the edge of the uh, technical area. About to come on for Cheku Kuyate after 24 minutes. Came here in a, uh, a joint deal with Harry Toffolo, who's among the substitutes for Forrest today. Yeah, just tried to stick... holding, holding his instep or something, is he? I'm not quite sure. So Kiate off, O'Brien on, a very creative player, Lewis O'Brien. And I just tried to stick Lewis O'Brien's sticker over Kiate, Willow, in my commentary bit, but I tried to do it left-handed, one-handed, 
and it's stuck in at a right old angle. Went all wrong. Well, they've got plenty of skill right across that midfield now, but just thinking if we can win the ball, we can dominate in there. Don't let them get on the ball, make sure we're first. Well, the change hasn't actually been made yet. No. Uh, Kiate's back on his feet. Lewis O'Brien was stripped off. He was on the edge of the technical area with his number 14 shirt uh, viewable. But he's now uh, gone back down the touchline and he's got his bib back on. And he hasn't come on. So Kiate's now made his way back onto the field. So having stuck Lewis O'Brien stuck here at a funny angle with I've got I'm in deep trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't undo it. Good. You can't peel stickers <laughs> off once you've done them, not these ones anyway. I've got it um, indelible, do you want one of them? <laughs> Cleared down the line by Worrell. We've played 25 minutes, you're with BBC That's Radio fine. Solent. Forrest nil, Bournemouth nil in the Premier League. Pompey one down at home to Peterborough. Brennan Johnson down the right side, Tack carries the ball out of play. Up goes the flag of the assistant referee on this near side. So I think Forrest are monitoring Kiate here. So I'm not going to undo the sticker just yet. <laughs> because O'Brien is still warming up. I have written it down on my notes, though. O'Brien on for Kiate. I've got tip X, I can deal with that. Don't worry, if you slip over, I'll tell you. So, <laughs> you definitely tell me. Solanke down the left side can't keep it in either, inside the Forest half. Game hasn't really got a, no. got a flow, hasn't got a pattern, has it? Neither team's no. on top. Just very even. Nobody dominating. Passing not that accurate continually. Sometimes it, these games you can be uh, because you're so you realise what a big game it is. Sometimes the uh, the basics can desert you until you settle into the game. But Forrest working that nicely along their back line, and here comes Scott McKenna up to the halfway line, left of the centre circle, looks for the big switch out to the right, and Lingard who's trying to ghost in behind Zamora who kept his eye on it well, backpedalling, and Tavernier challenged with Yates, and it's cleared up to halfway where Forrest are back in possession once again. Nice little link up between Nico Williams and Gibbs White, Lingard spun off beautifully, and now picks the ball up and goes past the challenge of Christie, nudges it to the left, Lodi forward from the left wing back here for Forrest, gets a low ball into the six-yard box, cleared away again by Mepham. Excellent, I love it when centre-halves line themselves up. It doesn't, know what, it doesn't matter where they're standing, they look at where the post is and they line themselves up, it's a great spot. And from the Forest throw-in by the corner flag, Lewis Cook was the hungriest and nipped in there ahead of Forest, and then Mepham fires it at Lewis Cook, who does well actually to manage to keep possession moving forward for the Cherries, up to halfway. McKenna jumps above his compatriot Ryan Christie, now some space to the left-hand side for Jordan Zamora. To carry it up to half, I was going to say carry it up to halfway, but he just checks there with nothing really on, and goes back to his captain, Kelly. It, it's a, it's kind of like both teams wouldn't mind a draw at the moment. Yeah, Forrest as the home team with the natural, a uh, uh, bit more adventure. Yeah. But at the moment, it is pretty safe stuff. As Lerma now comes up to halfway, he plays it forward. Tavernier's picked up a good position here between the lines and drives on centrally with Billing to his left. Tavernier's ball to Billing is slightly under hit. Back to Tavernier, maybe a chance to swing his right foot at it. Took too long, the door closed, he will win a corner. But again, Tavernier's ball to Billing, well, it was half a yard too weak, wasn't it? It's on his left foot as well. You know, you you're just crossed the D almost or a yard behind it. We're just looking at... Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's on the D almost. Strike the ball, take your chance. Yeah, Tavernier it was, and when it broke to eventually, Solanke was almost in his way, and Tavernier dug out the shot, and it was behind off McKenna. So Bournemouth do get a corner, they're first of the game. 28 minutes played, nil-nil. Terry's -nil. attacking the goal away to our left, the Trent end, which predictably has the River Trent behind. Gar Gary's given some signals here, and it's on the set place, set P that they've worked on. Tavernier will deliver it from the far side with his left foot. They're all lined up around the penalty spot, and it comes towards Kelly. Meppham was there too, and the referee, despite Meppham claiming he was blocked, referee Oliver has given Nottingham Forest the free kick. I think that managed to hit one of our players on the back, you know. Oh, that happens from a corner. You never know. Free kick to Forest, which they've taken from the wrong position. So Oliver whistles them back. First AFC Bournemouth game for a couple of years, Michael Oliver. Did Forest playoff semi final against Sheffield United here, which they won on penalties. Their goalkeeping hero from that game, Brees Samba, their number one from last season, was one of those who left over the window, went to join, uh, went to French football. As the ball is over on the far side now with Forest and Lodi, one of their recruits. Ball in towards Yates, oh goodness me, the Cherries hadn't spotted the run. Luckily for the Cherries, in one sense, the cross was deflected because Yates' run into the box hadn't been seen. The ball was heading for him, but Neto couldn't prevent it going behind for a corner to Forest. No, he couldn't hide it. I think he just tried to get his body in the way, but just clipped off. Black shirt. Oh, yeah, Lewis miles out. Yeah, it was Lewis Cook with the block again. 
approaching the half hour played at the city ground in the Premier League on BBC Radio Solent. Forest nil, Cherries nil. Forest corner from the right hand side. Gibbs White to deliver it once again. Steve Cook, McKenna, Worrell are all in there. And it comes towards the head of Steve Cook. It was a good jump in there by Lloyd Kelly to get his head on it and clear it out to this near side. The Forest right. Picked up again by Nico Williams, a lot of space for the Brazilian Lodi now, who switches it out to Gibbs White again, the corner taker, over on the far left side, halfway inside the Cherries half of the field. Dances past Ryan Christie, still going here. Gibbs White's ball into the box, too far in advance of Yates this time, who does make those runs into the penalty area, as the Cherries have got to pick up, but it went behind for a goal kick. Now, what about this one I've just seen? The, the linesman gives um, Kelly the thumbs up. Offside? Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Watch here, watch. We're watching the replay here, and as the ball comes Miles. in, yeah, Yates is two yards at least offside. So, Lloyd Kelly. that's interesting. I haven't seen that one though before. The thumbs up. Well, it's probably Lloyd Kelly just to check in. They got their angles right and they're holding their line right. So, would have, would have been all right there, wouldn't we, Lino? Brentford have scored against Leeds. Very few goals knocking around in the Premier League. No, it's the linesman who put his thumbs up. That's what I mean, but Lloyd oh. Kelly would be checking, wouldn't he? Just oh, with yeah. the line 1 0 Brentford. Ivan Tony from the spot. That's a foul on Tavernier by Worrell. On this near side, the Cherries left, about 10 yards into the forest half of the field. I've got a feeling that whoever scores first is going to be really important to them in this game. But including the lunchtime game, there are three, five, six, seven Premier League games at three o'clock or earlier today. We've played half an hour, there's been one goal in total, scored by Brentford. Everything else nil-nil, Chelsea West Ham, Newcastle Palace, Tottenham Fulham and Wolves Saints all nil-nil. Well it had to happen didn't it, all the commentators have been raving about the greatest Premier League yeah. stars ever. Man City don't play till tomorrow, that might be why there's been no goals, they're away at, uh, sorry till tea time, they're at Villa at 5.30. Free kick to the Cherries here, Adam Smith runs over it, Tavernier clips it into the penalty spot where it's allowed to bounce it all the way through to Dean Henderson with no real challenge from a black shirt of the Cherries. Yeah, Gary's not happy with the delivery there. There's a, a lot of movement going on, a lot of people trying to get on the end of it, but ultimately right through to the keeper. There's a lot of movement there from Dean Henderson as well, he was running along the edge of the box left and right with the ball in his hands, looking for an option, which is why the Forest fans were just groaning slightly, but eventually got rid of it. And now it's Warren again on this near side of the right, Forrest kicking from left to right towards the end where the Cherry supporters are housed in the Bridgeford stand. Down the right-hand side, Gibbs White takes it down beautifully, an awkward ball. Gibbs White whips the ball in towards the back post, it's going to run loose here for Lodi. Heavy first touch, smashes it towards goal, and an excellent block again by Lewis Cook, not for the first time. Yeah, well done, Lewis, that was vital there, we were all over the place. Are you going to take the corner quick, he's placed it down. No, he's having a look at it. Well, that started again from their 40 odd million pound man, Gibbs White, who raised many eyebrows with that fee when he was signed for Wolves. Spent last season on loan at Sheffield United, scored against the Cherries at the Vitality. He's got the corner, far side. 33rd minute, nil-nil. And it comes again towards the six-yard line. Kuyate! Heads it beyond Neto from close range. We thought he was limping off a moment ago with an injury problem, but he scores his first Nottingham Forest goal. 33 minutes on the clock, the Cherries must come from behind again. Well, I have to say... <laughs> I was waiting for the goalkeeper to come for that. It seemed to be in the direction of the, the goalkeeper, and I'm just waiting to have another look again first. He's out jumped someone, but that's that, that's all zonal in there. No, it's not the keeper. Well, it's a remarkable header from Kiate. He's running away from goal, well, though. He's actually going in the other direction. Everything, his body, momentum, everything is going the other way. And he's generated yeah. some great power with that header from six yards. Oh, it's an amazing header for him to adjust the way he has. But you're always, as a centre-half, you're always going to blame yourself when it, you get beaten by a header. And that's the way it is with that one. Well, if you are looking at the keeper, Neto, I would say that, that header went yeah. not in the middle of the goal, but only fractionally to the left of the middle yeah, of the goal. Yeah, I think there was too much power on it. It was, I thought he might have come for it, but it was it was curving a yard, two yards maybe outside the six-yard box. So first blood to Forest, Cheku Kiate, one of their free transfer catchers over the summer. If Billing can keep that in, the Cherries have got a chance here. Down the left-hand side, well advanced. Billing whips the ball in, and again, too close to the goalkeeper Henderson, straight into the Forest keeper's hands. Uh, it was a sort of decent ball in, wasn't it? Good bowl out by Henderson to the far side where Lodi was steaming on on the outside, but he couldn't be found by Gibbs White. And it's out for a forest throw just over the halfway line. 
Well, it's been a tight game. No doubts about that. Set plays in tight games are vital. The Forest have found one. So, Cherries a goal down. They lost their first two away games, 13-0 on aggregate. It was the joint most ever in the top flight in those first couple of games, along with Stoke going back to the 1880s. And they've added one more to that goals against Collar. Billing, little turn, but he turns straight into trouble. Ryan Yates on the halfway line, nicked it. Then Billing tries to win it back, went in firmly on Fiate. Billing's come off second best. Sat on the floor at the moment, just holding his left knee. It was a jarring challenge with Fiate. Billings down, Forrest are going to play, well they were going to play on, but the referees then stopped play. Billing... It was actually Chiarty that said to Billing, referee stop it, he's, I've caught him. I think yeah. they're, they're both blocked out and sometimes one just... You can see it here. Yeah. Yeah. As he kicked the ball, Billing, he then followed through and jarred his leg against Chiarty. Yeah. Well, Piate has scoring form again. He doesn't score many, has scoring form against Bournemouth. Remember that 4-3? Bournemouth's first Premier League win when Callum Wilson scored a hat-trick at West Ham. Piate scored that day. Seeing a replay of the header again, it really is an excellent it's header. An amazing header. Yeah. Moving away from goal, six yards out, but still getting... Not, it wasn't a glancing header, was it? It was somehow a bullet. Yeah, he just redirected it, but... Oh, if I'd have been standing in that six-yard box, I would have been livid. Phil no, nobody gets a free header in there. No. It's the zonal marking issues again. Phil Billing is just about now about to get back to his feet. Having had the attentions of uh, Nick Court, the Cherry's physio. Three-way coaching discussion down there with... A four-way coaching discussion, in fact, with Gareth Stewart involved now down there as well. Gary O'Neill, Gareth Stewart, Sean Cooper and Tommy Elphick all having a chat. Interesting. Billing's limping his way off to the side of the field here. Hopefully just an impact injury that will uh, yeah, get less sore as the minutes go on. Hopefully, yeah. And it's going to be a drop ball. So if you're just tuning in, this is the 37th minute. It's Nottingham Forest 1, Bournemouth 0. Ahead of from Cecu Kuyate, who left Crystal Palace at the end of last season, picked up by Forest in the window. Played centre-half against City last game when they lost 6-0. Took Steve Cook's place in the back three in the last game. McKenna over on the far side now to Lodi. Oh, great skill from the Atletico Madrid man there. Just dribbled around Adam Smith like he was invisible. And it's out for another forest throw just over halfway. I'd like to see that again. I don't know how he's done it. That was like a little drag back, drag flew, nutmeg, munch and drag back, everything. That's a bit of snake in there as well. <laughs> Steve Cook at the heart of the forest defence. Looking for revenge, of course, after the 1 0 loss back at the end of the season, which saw the Cherries gain automatic promotion. Side. Late offside flag there comes up against Forrest. Brennan Johnson was the one bursting through. We talk about the high turnover of players, by the way. Lewis Graben, the former Cherries striker, was another one of those who is no longer here. Al Ali of Saudi Arabia is Lewis Graben's new club. Have been released here at the end of the season? It annoys me with linesmen when they, they have to change hands to put their flag up. What's the difference? <laughs> Back to that in a second. Here's Billing over the halfway lines. And Laura now chasing on with Nico Williams. Good challenge from Williams, sliding in. Knocks one of the replacement balls off its white cone. And Cherry's going to throw it, level with the edge of the forest penalty area. One goal behind. Zamura, again, very casual there, but gets another throw in out of it as he played a 1-2 with Billing, who's back on the field but still just holding his left knee slightly. Billing tries to lean into Worrell, actually gets a free kick there as Worrell clipped him. Oh. Well, we have got an opportunity here to send the centre-halves forward as the free kick's just outside the left edge of the box. Yeah, get everybody up there, this is a real dangerous spot. Who wants it most? Well, Tavernier has waved Meppham and Kelly forward into the box. Portsmouth have equalised against Peterborough. Dane Scarlett again is in the fine run of form. 1-1 that one, that's available on our Hampshire frequencies on the digital service and on Freeview 722. Wolves nil, Saints nil. And here Forrest leading the Cherries by a goal to nil with six minutes left to the half. Tavernier, well he was interested to start with but he's been sent away and it's only now Lewis Cook standing over this one. About three or four yards outside the left edge of the penalty area. Cherries have got their attacking ranks lined up on the six-yard line. Referee Oliver telling them that he's going to be keeping a close eye on them and the defenders. Kelly's in there, Mepham's in there, Billings loitering, Lerma's right in there as well. In it comes to Lewis Cook, he tried to go for a cheeky one to the near post. Cleared away by Forrest up to the halfway line where Johnson and Zamora are in a race. Zamora gets there first and now Tavernier back to Adam Smith and the Cherries can regroup. Well, that was a bit unfortunate. Uh, Je Jefferson just tried to let it go through his legs and he clipped it. 
Yeah, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? It was a, definitely a tactical one, as you say, to try and fool the keeper at the near post with Lerma doing a little bit of a dummy run. Here come the Cherries. Christie's had a very quiet half. Ryan Christie is an attacking force anyway. Haven't really mentioned him too much on the ball so far. Took a little bit of a while to get into the game the other night as well. And it's back with Lewis Cook on the halfway line again for the Cherries. Out to Zamora on this near left side. But again, he has to check back from one shaded area of the pitch into another as Tavernier is fed down the left side. He wins a throw-in off Williams, down by the corner flag. Tavernier continuing to look probably the uh, the most industrious or most likely of the attacking players. To yeah, 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 he's definitely been having a right go to... Here he is again on the ball from Zamora's throw, 30 yards out, but forced by Williams away from goal. Lewis Cook, nice turn there away from Gibbs White. Now Tavernier drifting infield. Christie makes a run, but it's Adam Smith trying to join in the attack down the right-hand side. Then Smith plays a poor ball and no hope of reaching Christie. Easily cut out by Renan Lodi and Forrest have it at the back again. Not like Smithy, that. It looked to be a simple ball that Chelsea's were unable to execute properly. 1-0 Forrest, Kuate the scorer. And it's back down the left side again, but that's a poor ball given away by Rural to Lerma. Halfway inside the Cherries half, Lerma's ball in towards Ryan Christie. Nice idea, too much on it through the Henderson. Well, he uh, could only throw his head on it, if nothing else, he wasn't going to get to it. Forrest break out quickly over the halfway line, down the far side. Lodi once more, and with 15 Brazilian caps to his name, he's got to be a little bit handy if you play 15 times for Brazil. It's back now once again on this near left-hand side. Forest have it with McKenna. Friate, the goal scorer. Your verdict, as ever, very welcome at Solent Sport and what you've heard so far. Team selection. Ideas for the next manager, who you are angling towards, at Solent Sport on Twitter. Pierre Emil Hoybier has given Spurs a 1 0 lead in the London derby against Fulham. The uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Here at the City Ground in Nottingham, one of football's famous old venues. 1 0 Forest lead. That's a lovely ball from Gibbs White down the right side of the box. Johnson clips it in towards Lingard, just too uh, far in advance of him. Runs all the way through the penalty area. Lodi picks it up for Forrest, chips it back into the back post where Johnson's still there, headed away by Kelly. Nico Williams drives it in. That was blocked by the hand. That's a penalty. Lloyd Kelly threw himself in the way of the Bournemouth captain and he looked to clearly block the shot with his arm. And Forrest will get a penalty here. And I don't think the Cherries captain can have too much argument. No, I've seen the arm golf as well, and uh, the laws these days... Well, where's he supposed to, the old story, where's he supposed to put his arms? Well, I think if you're flying through the air and you've got your arms anywhere near out to your side, he's turned his body, I think you're going to have to say that's a penalty, Willow. It's not too far away from his body, but it's an extension of his body, and that is going to be a penalty. The fans around us are applauding, they've just seen the replay on the screen as well. So it was a wholehearted effort by Curley to get there and block the effort, but unfortunately for him, Williams' shot struck him on the hand, and it's going to be a penalty for Forrest here with VAR all being well, unless they see something we haven't seen, unless there's an offside that we haven't seen. Two and a half minutes before half-time to add to their 1-0 lead. Still waiting here, VAR is still checking the penalty for handball. This is one of those, Willow, which I think if this got overturned, it would be unbelievable. I mean, we're seeing it again from various angles. Why it's taking VAR so long to decide this one? We saw in real time, Kelly's hand is out to his left, it's hit him on the left hand as he's turned his back on the ball. Yeah, and his body's bigger, isn't it? We have to say his body's bigger with the use of his left arm to block the ball. Uh, this th I just think it's harsh. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of it the other way around, the other end, and I would definitely shout for a penalty. <laughs> Be the clearest penalty ever. Uh, we are just seeing a replay of the initial ball. He's not facing here. the ball, so just seeing if there's an offside. Well, I don't think there is there. I think Adam Smith's playing them onside as the initial ball is played forward. Although that's the only thing that could be in contention here, Willow, is were Forrest offside as the initial ball in the previous phase was played through. It looks like he is. Well, I don't say anything yet because we haven't got the lines. As we're looking now, it's Brennan Johnson and Adam Smith who are the two players involved. We haven't got the lines yet, we've just got a freeze frame of everything here as they work out exactly who's playing who on uh, onside. So I think they've decided the penalty will be a penalty if it's onside. So we're into the second phase of the very uh, check here. Still none the wiser, we've just got a freeze frame on the screen in front of us. This is taking absolutely forever. Uh, Brentford are two up meanwhile in the Premier League. As we still wait, the lines are green, so it's onside. So that bit is answered. 
And I think eventually Michael Oliver will point to the spot here, as he has initially in real time. And this has taken well about over two and a half minutes to get to this point. We're looking again here at something else. As the ball is struck by Williams, they're looking at whether somebody is in the line of the goalkeeper now, Willow, which I think you can say they weren't. What's, where's Michael Oliver going now? He's going to the monitor. So Michael Oliver is jogging over to the far side here to have a look at the monitor. Now, Willow. Percentage. They usually change it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. We're having a look here. I don't know the rules anymore. That, I what? can see both sides of the story. Our camera angle now is behind Michael Oliver's head as he looks at the monitor on the far touchline here. They're just tuning in. Cherries are threatened with a penalty against them here for a handball by Lloyd Kelly, which I think in the current rules would be given as his left it's arm is... Off, has it come off his thigh? Well, no, straight onto his hand like a goalkeeper diving to his left as he turned his back on the ball. Michael Oliver's had a lot of looks at this. He's probably had 10 replays, 12 replays. Players from both teams have wandered over to get as close as they're legitimately allowed. Now Michael Oliver's walking away. Penalty is given. We got there in the end. Fair play to Michael Oliver for sticking with the decision, because as you say, well, often when they are advised to go to the monitor, they do change their mind. He's now uh, explaining to Lloyd Kelly why it's been given. I don't know. Comes to something when you you know you can look, we've looked at it ten times now. It's taken four minutes to get to that decision. Do you, do you know? I mean, I don't know for certain it is. Right. Well, uh, yellow card for Neto for uh, delaying the restart there. As he hang around on the edge of the penalty area, or by the penalty spot. Brennan Johnson has the ball. We're about to begin added time here. There's five minutes to be added on at the end of the half. It's Nottingham Forest 1, Bournemouth 0, but Forest have a penalty. Brennan Johnson away to our right after Nico Williams' shot was judged as handball by Lloyd Kelly. I think it was handball. I'm going to say in the, in the current laws that I think it's a fair decision. Can Neto, having just been booked, redeem himself now by saving Johnson's penalty? This is away to our right. It's a good penalty. Neto went the right way, but you can't stop those. Left-footed, crisp into the left-hand side of the goal. And it's Johnson for 2-0 Forest. Well, after all the drama, he very confidently struck the penalty. The keeper went the right way. He couldn't get anywhere near it. Too much pace on the ball. Firmly hit. Forrest go 2 0 ahead. Well, there's a long, long way back again for the Cherries from here. 2 0 behind. On the stroke of half time. Yes. Yeah, such, such a psychological blow. I've been on both sides of it, and when you go in with that goal just be before half-time, it gives you such a lift to go 2-0 ahead. Just have to kill the game off now, and I'm sure as they go in at half-time, Forrest will be told exactly that. Possession, keep the ball, keep the tempo right for them, but it's up to us to change it round. Two minutes to the added five at the end of the half, still remaining. Bournemouth 2-0 behind. Out of play on the far side for a throw into the Cherries. Unstoppable penalty from Brennan Johnson, his second goal of the season. Had 28 goal involvements last year. There's another yellow card. Who's been booked there? Uh, he's pointing Michael Oliver to somebody. Is that Kuyate? Well, he knocked the ball. He was going to throw in quick. He knocked the ball out of his hand. Oh, it's Kuyate. He's been shown a yellow card then. The goal scorer of the first for Forrest. Here come Bournemouth with Christie now. But running across the field, and then again, only red shirts around him. And Bournemouth have to go back out to this near side. The left. Cherries have it with Lerma. And Cherries again forced back into their own half. 2 0 at Solent Sport on Twitter. You can WhatsApp us on the usual number 08000 321 3. One ball down the right side from the Cherries looking for the edge of the Forest penalty area. Lodi under pressure from Christian from Solanke heading back towards his own corner flag. Solanke got a foot in, goes back along the byline to Henderson, the keeper, who clears it away left footed out for a throw in. One minute of added time remaining. Yeah, we could just lift one back, that would be a, such a massive help. Can we get forward? Oh, Gary O'Neill, Sean Cooper, Tommy Elphick. We really have got some questions to think about at half time. Lerma now coming forward. Little ball around the corner from Solanke, but again, no one there really to link up with. Bournemouth do have a throw in though here. Yeah, in the Kelly, stages. Up. Kelly up there, take a long one. Well, it's not going up, it's going to be a short one. Adam Smith is going to take it. 
They're probably a little bit concerned about Forrest's ability on the counter-attack, Willow, if they send Kelly up for a long throw. Put it 2-0 down. You do have to roll the dice here and there. Adam Smith's ball into the penalty. It was a good one. And Worrell, a diving header behind for the edge of the six-yard box for Forrest. There will be time to take this. Cherry's corner, 2-0 down, dying seconds of the half. Yeah, Dominic just behind him. It was a good header, pretty safe header. It was always going to land on him. Just a case of will. Could he get out for a throw in, but he went safe and out for the corner. Tavernier with it over on the far side, the Cherry's right. This time a cluster of bodies from both teams. They were on the six-yard line this time. They're now just inside the D on the edge of the penalty area. Nepham spins off and runs round the back. He takes up a position on the six-yard line as Tavernier signals for the runners to make a move. In from Tavernier to the near post. Uh, Kelly was in there, but Forrest had cleared. That is a half-time whistle here at the city ground. And it's what? £140 million and 21 signings. It's what the fans expect, really. It's 2-0 to Nottingham Forest at half-time. The goal's on 33 minutes. An excellent header from Kuyate from a corner as he was heading away from goal. Got great power on it and headed it past Neto. And then on the stroke of half-time, a penalty decision that took a full four minutes and more to confirm as Lloyd Kelly handballed Nico Williams' shot. Brennan Johnson, an unstoppable penalty, made it 2-0. Well, at the other end, I haven't got a shot written down for Bournemouth again. Thank you, Clarky. Yeah, we're just standing by here for Forrest, but there they come out of the uh, out of the tunnel right now. Cherries are making a change at the start of this second half. Ryan Fredericks is going to be coming on. I'm just trying to do the uh, deductions, Willow, to see who's gone off. It looks like Jordan Zamura hasn't re-emerged for the second half, so just seeing the Cherries look like they're going to be lining up with three at the back, which is how they changed for the last 20 minutes or so against Wolves in midweek with Smith, Metham and Kelly as the back three, Tavernier as the left wing back, Fredericks as the right wing back, and then a midfield of Billing, Lerma and Cook, and Christie in the number 10 behind Dom Solanke. Is that how you see it, Bolo? Yeah, just trying to check it out. Just having a look here. Well... well they're, they're sort of lining up that way, aren't they? Would you, it would suggest it. Fredericks is certainly on the field, he'll have to come back off. Uh, yeah, just wait for the ball to move, you'll get a better idea. Gary O'Neill just coming out the tunnel there at the same time as Michael Oliver. It didn't look like he was uh, he was uh, particularly pleased with the penalty decision. Uh, Ryan Fredericks has just reversed his way off the field. Would you be well. pleased with that? If we well, you're there? never pleased with any penalty that no. goes against you, are you? But uh, Tommy Elphick just handing in the substitutes card to the fourth official, Matt Donoghue who's just getting his numbers uh, in order, and it is confirmed as Jordan Zamora, uh, who is off, and Fredericks, who is on. So change of shape for this second half, looks like a back three, and Cherry's two behind, and looking to end what is now a four-and-a-half game Premier League run without a goal. I'll give you the two team lineups as they are in just a moment. Cherry's all in black from left to right, towards the end where their own supporters are for this second half. Forest red shirts, white shorts, red socks, the officials were in a luminous yellow. Michael Oliver, England's top referee, is the referee who gave the penalty for a handball by Lloyd Kelly just before half time as he threw himself in the way of Nico Williams' shot. Went over to the monitor, full four or so minute delay as they decided whether it was a penalty. Eventually the decision stood and Brennan Johnson scored. But the Cherries looking for Solanke early on there, that was cut out by Steve Cook. Billing pressuring high up inside the forest half of the field, cleared away long back to the Cherries. And here's Chris Meppham having to nudge it back to his keeper Neto. So I've given you the Cherries team, as we think it will be. Neto, the keeper, Smith, Metham, Kelly, the back three. Wingbacks, Fredericks on the right, Tavernier on the left. Cook, Billing, Lerma, a central three. Or rather, Christie seems to have dropped a bit deeper. Back to that in a second here in Forest with Brennan Johnson in the penalty area to the top of the box where Lewis Cook's back there. Kuyate, who's definitely shrugged off that earlier injury. Now Lodi once again down this left-hand side. Back it comes to Kuyate again, who turns away from Christie. Near side of the left, Lodi. Drives across into this penalty area. Adam Smith gets ahead on it, goes behind for the Forest corner. Let me complete those team lineups then. Cherries then with filling behind Solanke to finish that team. The rest of the bench: Travers, Stevens, Stacey, Marcondes, Senesi, Anthony Moore, and Dembele. Forest have Henderson in goal. A back three of Worrell, Cook, and McKenna. Wingbacks: Williams and Lodi. Then Kiate, Lingard, and Yates, and Johnson and Gibbs White. Here is. Gibbs White now, down this near right-hand side, back to the edge of the box where Jesse Lingard shoots, it's wobbling in front of Neto, but he just packs it down and catches it in the second attempt. Yeah, no real problems there for Neto. Right-left now, just kept the ball in. 
Ball back over to Lerva on the left-hand side. Here's Tavernier now, steaming on down that left flank, whips the ball in, but again, just meat and drink for Dean Henderson, straight down the goalkeeper's throat, ten yards away from any other cherries in black shirts. Yeah, I admire him for getting the cross in. I mean, it's a very rare thing, but only two, two attackers in there. Now from up on the halfway line, but they've skipped the challenge here, and it's Johnson away down this near side for Forrest as they attack the Trent end. Johnson tries to catch Neto out of the near post. Neto just had to readjust himself there. We were right behind that, Willow, and I was slightly concerned. Yeah, I think he always had it covered, but it was going in the net. Yeah, goalkeepers, of course, are more inclined to be coming out of their goal rather than retreating back towards it. And uh, Johnson sensed that. They tried that the other day, didn't they, as well? I'm sure they tried to sneak one past Neto at the near post. Maybe they've seen something in the games they've watched. 2-0 to Forrest. Cherries, at the moment, a miserable start to the season continues. Managerless, officially, of course. Fredericks with a little nutmeg with his first touch on. Lodi down this near side. Now the play it goes for another throw-in. It's about halfway through the second half when Gary O'Neill switched to three at the back against Wolves. And to be fair, the Cherries came under a bit more pressure in that second half. But yeah, matching, up, matching up with Forrest now as Solanke runs into McKenna. Down he goes, that's going to go all the way through for a Forrest. But McKenna keeps it in by the corner flag in the end. Solanke chasing on as Dean Henderson allows the ball to run very close to his goal line before clearing it away. Then Worrell under pressure up to halfway. Kelly and Gibbs White were having a real battle, and Kelly runs straight into the challenge of Yates. And Forrest do get the free kick, they want to a few seconds early. Halfway inside their own half. Well, there's no way he was going to win that, it just surprises me. I know it's, there's frustration within the team. Just giving the free kicks away like that just gives the ball back to them. And not even Forrest, we talked about uh, Cherries having the fewest shots, the fewest on target, and the lowest expected goals. Forrest have faced more shots, faced more shots on target, and have the highest goals against expected of any team in the Premier League so far. Not so far today, they've only conceded one blocked shot as Fredericks allows that one to go out of play down this near side, and it will be a Cherries free kick inside their own half. Um, and there out on that left hand side again, it seems to like him there, doesn't he? Steve Cooper once again, the Forest head coach, having to tie one of their sky blue coloured tracksuit tops around his waist there because his all black clobber today clashes with the Cherries all black playing kit. Cherries' next opponents in the Premier League are Newcastle at St James's Park next week. They are 1 0 up against Crystal Palace at home, an own goal from Tyreek Mitchell. Done late on, of course, at Liverpool in midweek. Newcastle. Lerma's ball down the right, Fredericks is offside. Flag never came, but I think it would have done. But there you see, Fredericks is clearly offside, and Cherries want to throw him from it. That, well, I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't understand that. <laughs> That's a prime example of why the late flags are stupid there. Because Fredericks is definitely interfering, oh, it's, that's it's why the defender yards, headed it out. Two yards offside. Yeah. But then they'll tell you, but the ball didn't get to him. Yeah, but the defender oh. only headed it out because Fredericks was there. And say so he got injured on the way. Five minutes gone in the second half. John Williams is the voice alongside me, the former Cherries defender. As Fredericks again on this near side, the Cherries half time substitute for Zamora. I think I need Forrest. to go away on the referee's course. Fredericks on this near side, a little running field away from Kiata. This is good from Ryan Fredericks, makes his way nearly to the edge of the box, and then Solanke loses it under his feet after some pretty good build-up play from Fredericks. One back by Lewis Cook for the Cherries here. Billing, 25 yards out, he's going to hit a shot! Oh, what a strike from Phil Billing! That's an absolute rasper! Scores at the city ground for the second season in succession, and that is exactly the response the Cherries are looking for. Magnificent hit from the Big Dane, 51 minutes gone, Forest 2, Cherries 1. Well, absolutely magnificent from Phil Bill, what a strike. I mean, uh, we, that's all we've been asked, and get close to the belt here. Fire one away, if you don't shoot, or you don't, you don't shoot, don't score. He hasn't half caught that, do you? I mean, uh, Top corner going away from the goalkeeper. Well, I said for the Brennan Johnson penalty, Willow, you don't save those. You don't save those from Phil no. Billing. That was unbelievable. Another throw into the Cherries. That's the Cherries fan. You might just be able to hear them over in the far yeah, corner. Yeah, finally giving them something to get behind the team for. That goal was at that end of the ground. Here comes Tavernier into the penalty area. Solanke holds it up. Back it comes to Lerma, 25 yards out. Adam Smith now. Cherry's been waved forward by Gary O'Neill down in front of us. Ryan Fredericks, who's actually little surge, started that move. Fredericks again, crossed to the back post on the slide. Billing coming in, headed by Nico Williams. Doesn't really go anywhere. Billing picks it up. Goes back to Lloyd Kelly, just outside the left corner of the penalty area. Jefferson Lerma. If anyone needs an opportunity to shoot, it's him. He'll have seen Billing ping one in the top corner. Lewis Cook. You have to say, Fredericks is a little, little flame, hasn't he? Yeah. 
It was his run off the right-hand side that got the Cherries moving forward. Half-time sub for Zamora. Here's Lewis Cook again. Back in field to Christie. The change of shape at the moment, just giving Forrest one or two questions to answer. Lloyd Kelly over to the left-hand side. Here's the goal scorer, Billing. Held up, left corner of the penalty area, into the feet of Tavernier. Both sets of supporters singing, come on you Reds. That's a poor ball though from Kelly to Billing, and oh, it's poor equally from Forrest. Tavernier nicks it back, Lerma's got it, halfway inside the Forrest half. Here's Christie, not through to Tavernier, can he find space? Runs into traffic in red shirts just inside the penalty area. Forrest oh, clear. I was waiting for him to swing it again. Just kept wanting to go across the penalty area, didn't get a, a shot away. Well... I, I haven't seen every goal will I, that Phil Benning has scored, but if he scored many better than that, I would be surprised. That no, was an amazing strike, amazing. He scored his first ever senior goal here for Huddersfield, did Phil Billing, back in 2016. As I say, he scored here last season in the Cherries' first ever win at the City Ground in the league. And he's given them a hope here, he's given them a leg up into the game. Oh, without least. a doubt, you know, what? it was going to be a case of, if they get the next one, it's all over, but now we're back in it. Christie along the halfway line, seems to already be more involved Ryan Christie in a much more central midfield role. For Smith's ball forward is poor, easily dealt with by McKenna. Now Gibbs White, uh, sorry, Lingard trying to go on the, around the outside of Smith, support from the Brazilian Lodi, but Adam Smith shows good tenacity there and Mepham clears it away and out for a throw -in. Gary O'Neill runs to retrieve the ball himself. In the technical area, the Cherries caretaker manager. Doing well there, Adam Smith, just got his body in the way and let nature take its course, just run it down. No way round him. Throw in taken by Lodi, back down the touchline. I mentioned about Forrest having faced more shots and more on target, Willow. And uh, there you go. Took the, Bournemouth have a one shot on target and it's gone in. Liverpool levels of conversion last weekend, nearly. Terry's got it on halfway again with Adam Smith on this near right hand side. Room for Lerma to turn. Home crowd just sensing here, Willow, that their yeah. team are struggling in this second Well, I mean, I've been here, I've played here a couple of times, and they are known for turning when things aren't going well. Morris give it away again. Bournemouth all of a sudden have got extra numbers in the middle of the park, haven't they? This change of system has given them a bit more presence in that central area. Yeah, it's certainly given us more possession, that's true. Tavernier over on the left-hand side, on the halfway line. If you're late back from the half-time interval, Cherries have got one back here. Phil Billing with a 25-yard thunderbolt into the top corner of the net beyond the flailing hands of Dean Henderson. And you see a penalty right on the stroke of half-time to go two behind. Back to 2-1 now. Lerma, BBC Radio Solo. Loads of space for Lerma. The home fans urging the Forest players to close him down. Tavernier from the left. Swings one into the box. Lodi deals with it, but didn't know what was in his rearview mirror. And heads it behind for a Cherry's corner on the right. Good work again. Dangerous cross. Couldn't get anybody on the end of it, but it's one as a corner. So Tavernier comes across to take it on this near side. Gary O'Neill passing some instructions on to Ryan Fredericks, who's made a real impact since coming on. In one or two areas. He certainly has. Here comes the Cherries corner then on this right hand side. Boscombe back of the net rings out from the Bridgeford stand away to our right. And the Cherries pull this back to level pegging. Here comes a corner from Tavernier towards the back post where Billing was coming in again, headed straight up in the air by Forrest. Keeper Henderson comes, gets a decent enough fist on it, and the clearance is hammered away from Lodi once more. That's two out of two for Gary O'Neill, catching long clearances out of the sky. Yeah, good work, keep the game moving. And the cricket team, find some skills like that from Gary O'Neill. 2-1 Forrest. I didn't see a, hardly a single member of the Forrest coaching staff apart from Steve Cooper in the technical area below in the first half, but it, given this start to the second half by the Cherries, there are now three out there. Lewis Cook again on this near right-hand side. Here's Fredericks once again now, right corner of the area. Knocks it down the right side of the box looking for Lewis Cook, pulls it back towards the penalty spot, cleared away by Cuyate for Forrest. And now Lodi, under pressure from Christie. Don't give away a foul there, Ryan Christie. Excellent between Christie and Fredericks. Fredericks is claiming a touch off Lodi, but the exuberant protests for Fredericks are unrewarded by referee Oliver. And it's a Forest goal kick. Fredericks coming on at right back has made an impact, which is quite astonishing because, I mean, he, he's just got the, the block on the tackle for, the, for stopping them get out. He's been involved in the goal, he's been involved in getting us corners. It's well done, it's, well done. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because if you were naming the Cherries team from the start, you probably wouldn't think you'd name Adam Smith in the back three, would you? When you bearing in mind how many centre-halves you've got in the squad, Stevens, Senesi on the bench, you'd think, OK, Adam Smith would be the wing-back. They've chosen to put Adam Smith in as one of the three central defenders and get Fredericks going down the right-hand side. And so far, 
it certainly had a positive influence on the Cherries' performance. 12 minutes gone in the second half, but Forrest now with one of their rare forays into the Cherries' half in this second half so far. Linesman on the far side, not buying Brennan Johnson's efforts to win a cheap free kick by the touchline. And then he delayed the restart by hiding the ball up his shirt. You have to say that referees and linesmen have cottoned on to that one, haven't they? They, they must have. Again, uh, we see it every week. I don't know how it doesn't make their briefings. Watch out for this one. Yeah, I, I bet it does. Yeah, I bet it has done now. No, it seems this year they are seeming to ignore more of those. Definitely. Smith for the Cherries on this near side. Here's Fredericks again. 12 and a half gone. Remember Southampton behind at Wolves, a late goal and a half there. Pompey Peterborough at one each. And there are the live BBC Radio Solent games for this afternoon. Nothing in midweek for the Cherries this week, but the manager hunt will be stepped up, I'm sure. Now it's over on the left-hand side with Marcus Tavernier. Down the left side of the box goes Billing. Billings, well, it's a, a cross-come shot off balance there from Phil Billing. And it goes sailing over the bar for a goal kick. Uh, Brentford 3 leads 1, hat-trick for Tony. Yeah, I'm surprised he's still at that football club. I thought one of the big boys would have come and took him earlier on. To be fair to you, a couple of weeks ago, you did say in the car you were very surprised that he hadn't been picked yeah. up by now. Hattrick this afternoon against the Leeds, who started the season well. Brentford looked like it's going to be a tough place to go, maybe, this season. 2-1 here. The Cherries, well, have actually turned the, uh, the possession over in the second half. They now lead the possession stats, 54-46. They had two goal attempts, one on target and one goal. Ball over on the far side at the moment with the Cherries once again. That's bouncing around between a couple of midfield players, Lerma and Yates come together to try and win it, and Kriates nicked it back for Forrest, and here driving on is Gibbs White, Lingard to his right, nudges it towards Lingard now, driven across goal, Neto at full length dive, it didn't reach him, it also didn't reach Johnson at the back post, and all the way through for a Cherries goal kick. Yeah, the referee immediately signalled the goal kick, I thought the goalkeeper had got a touch on it, but... No. A little bit of spin in the middle of the pitch, the ball just ran their way, Forrest, I thought, oh no, just not a spinner. But too, too firm on the cross, miles too firm, nobody could get near it. Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth 1 in the Premier League. We play 59 minutes here at the City Ground as Solanke tries to chase one on through the middle for the Cherries, but it's knocked back to the Forest keeper, Dean Henderson, all in bright blue, sort of turquoisey blue. Defending the goal away to our right in front of those Cherry supporters who will have at least been livened up by the yeah, first goal since yeah, the opening day of the season yeah. in the league. The way Fredericks has come on and started. Fredericks has challenged Lodi, and Lodi's been left in a heap off the field here, so the Cherries have got a man over here. Lewis Cook driving in towards the centre of the field. Forrest desperately scrambling back with the left back out of position. Here's Ryan Christie. Goes for goal himself with four up with him, and it's blocked behind for a corner. Fredericks had just made a great run down the side of him, and if he slips him, he's getting a shot at the goal, at the goalkeeper at the very least. Wow, Cherries could have made Look more of that. that. Dear oh. me. Forrest had their left back out of position, which is why Fredericks was able to get a two-on-one going. Unfortunately, Christie's final choice wasn't the best. Uh, Chelsea nil, West Ham 1 is the latest score at Stamford Bridge in the Premier League. Chelsea having a bad week. Here, Forrest leading by two goals to one, but it's a Bournemouth corner. As we look away to our right, again, Gary O'Neill uh, energetically pointing where he wants people as that corner comes in, headed away by the Forrest skipper Worrell. In fact, it was Yates who got there. There's been a clash of heads, actually. The ball goes behind for a corner. We've got... Uh, Two number 10s on the floor here, Gibbs White and Ryan Christie, and another Forest player down as well. A couple of collisions there, Willow. Both sets of medical staff will come on. I don't think they were suspicious ones. I think both lads were just going for the ball, and Christie's banged his head. Just having another look at it. Yeah, it's a clash of heads between uh, Christie and Gibbs White as they went for a header. Gibbs White's back to his feet. He's tried to head the ball and headed the back of his head. There's another Forest all player. one of them. Yeah, another Forest player down as well. I'm trying to see who that is. I think it's Yates who might have got. It is. You got one in the face. Right, yeah. right in the dial from the left foot of Lewis Cook, I think it was. Lewis Cook. Yeah. yeah. So Cherries will have a corner here. Marcus Tavernier, as he jogged over to the far corner to take this, was greeted with a rousing round of applause by those Cherries travelling supporters. One of three teams of Cherries to so do the double over Forest last season. Thankfully, have ended their run of four Premier League games without scoring. They would have equaled a club record of five games without a goal if they had fired a blank today. Record going back to the 60s and 70s, an unwanted club record. Remember last season, it was club records for clean sheets. This time, it's not been club records for blanks, but that one is 
consigned to the bin because Phil Billings, 25-yarder, has brought it back to 2-1 to Forest. Confirmation of that West Ham goal scorer at Chelsea by uh, a goal to nil. It is Mikel Antonio who scores. So Yates is back on his feet, but is out of commission for this set piece here for the Cherries. So Forest are a defender down, but the Cherries they have left three out of the box. So the Cherries have got four back defending in and around the penalty area. Corner from the left-hand side. Tavernier to deliver it all the way across the box where Lloyd Kelly nods it back into the mixer. Solanke with an overhead, deflected and in! It's an equaliser! Dominic Solanke with a spectacular overhead that took a deflection beyond Dean Henderson and within 17 minutes of half-time, Bournemouth have cancelled out. Forest two-goal half-time lead, it's 2-2. Well, it was a set play, no doubt about that. The initial deep ball and the header back across but I'm not sure they planned for that overhead kick from Dominic. What a fantastic strike. Didn't really put power through it, did he? I think he just went for accuracy and steered it into the corner. What a finish. Oh, we're going to get a replay now. That one, as you say, Willow, clips deep to the back post. Kelly nods it back across as it drops. Dom Solanke, I'm not sure who it came off. Did it come off the head of Mepham or the defender? We're going to get another look now, but it's 2-2 either way. I just wondered if Chris Meppen was claiming it as he ran away. We're going to get a great angle now as the ball's deep inside the Cherries' half. It's come no. off the defender, actually. It's yeah, come it's, off. No, it's Dominic's goal. Yeah, it's Dominic Solanke's goal. So he's off the mark for the season. And that is his 50th Bournemouth goal, by the way, as well, Dom Solanke. 2-2 at the City ground. And exactly the kind of response that Gary O'Neill's half-time change, personnel and tactically, has demanded here. And Forrest are going to respond themselves here. They're going to make a change. They're going to bring on Awonyi. The £18 million pound man from Werder Bremen is about to come off the bench. Yeah, great response by the lads, this. All the second half been threatening, and one from a set play always helps. Yeah, set play was one area the Cherries didn't really score that many from last season. Here come Forrest, though, now. Bruised, having lost a 2-0 lead on home soil. Over on the far side, of course, they were carrying a few bruises from their 6-0 loss at Man City in the week, as it's cleared away by Mepham from the edge of the penalty area. Out to the far side it goes, Nico Williams. So it's going to be a centre forward coming on here for Forrest. And Wanyi. I thought you said Bruges, I thought they signed somebody else. <laughs> well, they tried to sign someone from Bruges. Noah Lang, but uh, the Dutch winger didn't want to come. Or Bruges didn't want to sell him. Might not have gone as far as asking Lang if he wanted to come. Here they come down the left hand side, Forrest. And they're red and white, Cherry's all in black. There's a bit of a red smoke flare let off in the Bournemouth end, so there's a bit of a hazy red mist away to our right-hand side as we look, but the play is to our left at the moment. Lingard out to the right, Williams drives the ball into the penalty area, Terry's trying to defend this, Fredericks with a diving header away, miscontrolled by Lerma, driven across the penalty area, shanked there by Williams, headed away again by Lerma, and then it's helped on by Tavernier down the left-hand side and over to halfway where Terry's with a throw. That was a great header by Fredericks. Not only did he, sh he shouted Freddy's ball, you could see the... Smithy Duff underneath it and let him head it away. Great stuff. I love communication like that. Your mouth the quickest thing on the pitch. Well, hopefully that's a big moment for Dom Solanke as well, getting himself up and running for the season after his injury issues, Willow, and completing your 50th Bournemouth goal as well. It's a nice little milestone for the Cherries man. Some of that red smoke from the flare is just making its way into the back of the press box now, into the back of my throat. 2-2, 20 minutes gone in the second half. Forrest still haven't made that sub yet, they haven't had an opportunity. Adam Smith down the right-hand side. Fredericks again, across the top of the box. Is that a foul? Yes, says referee Michael Oliver. I thought he was going to play the advantage as the challenge came in from Lodi. And Cherry's got a free kick here, 25 yards out, but out to the right touchline. I think Chris, you would have fancied the advantage there, don't you? you Possibly, know, yeah. He's got two defenders in front of him, but he's on the edge of the box, though, almost. Yeah, he was in the sort of space that has seen him cutting onto his left foot many a time and have a shot of goal, albeit not always that successfully, Ryan Christie's shooting radar. So here's the free kick, Tavernier has come across to take it, Forrest aren't making the change at the moment, defending a set-piece. Wanyi still waiting for his opportunity to come on. Lewis Cook and Tavernier stand over this one. He's still joining us late after the first half, Billing and Solanke, last year's two leading scorers, have pulled it back to 2-2. Lewis Cook whips this one in. They've left a couple of runners there. There's a flag up, actually. That'll be offside, but Tom uh, Solanke was quite all alone in the, free, in the uh, penalty area. Here comes the change then, and it's going to be Jesse Lingard who's coming off, and Toho Awonyi is going to come on for Forrest. Up front. You have to say, Lingard, I don't remember him being spoke about too much. A bit 
said it was one of his better games. Yeah, not a, not a huge impact. He hasn't started the last couple for Forest. So one he's on, £18 million from, I think I said Werder Bremen a minute ago. I meant Union Berlin, I couldn't read my own writing. As the ball is picked off by the Cherries in midfield again now. Jefferson Lerma with space to his left and Billing now. Forest uh, out of shape at the moment. One or two uh, <laughs> Forest fans around us shouting. Lovely link up between Billing and Tavernier. Left side of the penalty. Here comes Ryan Christie. Oh, oh what was I just saying about Ryan Christie's shooting radar? At the near post. Should have at least hit the target, put it wide. Uh, anything on target you would have settled for, wouldn't you? But chip it over the crossbar. Great pullback. For a bit too much power. Pulled back into his path, didn't have to break stride hardly on his left foot, didn't hit the target, Ryan Christie. But Cherries really are giving Forrest some things to think about in the second half. Cherries have been quite clearly in the ascendancy in the second period. Forrest limited only to sporadic breakouts, well. Yeah, they have, and we are definitely the dominant team at this stage. So now we just need another goal, and what a comeback that would be. Well, both of these teams have scored two goals in five games before this. Both have doubled that tally in the course of the 67 or 8 minutes we've played so far as Mepham on the defensive here. And one year the substitute comes on and powers Adam Smith off the ball and wins a throw in down by the left corner flag here. Back it comes to Awanyi, who is Forest number nine in squad numbers. In it comes from Lodi, whipped into the six yard box. Let's feel Billing back defending. Dear me, what a header that was by Adam Smith. That is so brave. Kiyate gets the applause from the home fans, this hurdles a couple of challenges and then Scott McKenna from 10 yards inside the Cherries half goes all the way back to his own goalkeeper. I don't expect we'll see that ahead of the game, but that was hard to attack gear. So calm, got away with it. Back out to this near side again, we've played 69 minutes almost on BBC Radio Solar. Here come Forrest, Brennan Johnson, down the left-hand side, faced by Mepham. Johnson's ball into the near post, and Wanyi couldn't get, his, uh, get it out of his feet and drives it well past the near post in the end. 2-2 it remains here, and again, goals coming through elsewhere, but when there's attacks happening at City Ground, I cannot hear a word that Tom Murray, our producer, is saying, so uh, he'll tell me again in my ear what that score was, he just told me. With 21 minutes to play here. Portsmouth 2, Peterborough 1. Pompey have come from behind, Dave Scarlett's got another one. Sorry, Tom, to make you keep repeating yourself, but not when Forrester attacking, because I can't hear you. I used to play with his mate when I was a kid, captain. And his brother as well, Mint. <laughs> It comes to this near side. Mepham clears it down the line. Ooh, some chance here. He's got some space to run into here. Oh. If it drops, which it doesn't. Lodi back pedaling wins the header. Then in goes Christie with McKenna. Again, the two Scots combining as they're coming together there. Both players blocking out. It spins out of play. Both sets of players immediately raise their hand to appeal for the ball. And Forrest got the decision on the halfway line. Laid off by Brennan Johnson, but straight to Marcus Tavernier over on the far side for the Cherries. Lerma. Knocks it back to the right of the back three, Adam Smith, with the Cherries having tweaked their formation at half-time. 20 minutes to go, Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth 2, in the Premier League. If McKenna lets that bounce, so Anki might be in as the ball's played down the right side. Gary O'Neill with a great touch this time with his foot to keep the ball in near the edge of the touchline. Quite right, Chris, never let it bounce. <laughs> Just got enough on it to get away. Well, McKenna and Johnson in the Forest team are the only two survivors from this corresponding fixture at the start of last season in the Forest team. You might remember Bournemouth won here after David Brooks was sent off. Hung on to a 2-1 victory with a bench full of kids in Scott Parker's uh, second league game in charge. I wonder if David's having a, another game this week. Is it something arranged? I don't you know? think so, no. I don't think so. Just nice and steady, David. Take Got, it. Yeah, that was Gary O'Neill's message. They're going to take it very, very slowly. Came back in the B team against Brentford earlier in the, uh, the week. As it's cleared away by Dean Henderson, the Forest keeper, from right to left. No more movement yet on the Cherry substitutes bench, having brought on Fredericks for Zamora at half time. Now down this near side, Forest come with McKenna, but again he turns back in infield to Kiate. And Forest will start again over on the right hand side. Down the line it goes, down the inside right channel, looking for a one year, but there's Lloyd Kelly to volley it clear. And then miscontrolled by Billing, and a play for a Forest throw inside the Cherry's half. Picked it away there, so Bill wants to be a bit careful. This rest is a little bit switchy with his. Oh. It's the voice of John Williams. This is BBC Radio Solent across the south and on AFCB TV's audio service as well. 2 2 in the Premier League. Solanke's battling back and wins it there and as he nudges Kuyate off the ball. Again, Forrest rather stopped thinking they were going to get a free kick. They didn't get it. Cherries will get a free kick as Kuyate, having claimed he was fouled by Solanke, 
then reversed the roles and gave away a free kick. Yeah, very clever by Dominic there. <laughs> Five foot eight, trying to get in from six foot four. Lewis Cook, five foot eight, but with the anger of somebody who's six foot eight. <laughs> I should say the Yorkshire, the Yorkshire grit, probably, rather than anger. Sometimes the words can hurt more than a punch. Down the right side from Fredericks, looking for Solanke. McKenna with the header inside the Forest half of the field. Christie trying to shield it from Yates, who... Excellent work there from Ryan Yates in the Forest midfield, made light work of, Sol of uh, Ryan Christie. It's a little bit risky at the back there, Forest, with Steve Cook on the ball. Didn't notice too much about Cook, you really, have we? No. To be fair, a lot of it's been going down the side of him, isn't it? Yeah, and down the wings. Just a bit of movement going on in the forest technical area here. I wonder if they're plotting another change, having brought on a one knee. Here's Steve Cook on the ball right now. Steve Cooper has got one monkey off his back in this game. His teams had never scored against Bournemouth in the three previous meetings in his time as Forest and Swansea manager. This is the fourth attempt, and his side have got two this afternoon. But now, so have Bournemouth. 2 2. Kriate and a Brennan Johnson penalty for Forest. Billing and Solanke levelling up for the Cherries. Both goals spectacular in different ways. Billing from 25 yards and Solanke an overhead kick that took a deflection off a defender on its way into the net, but definitely Solanke's goal. Yates inside the Cherries half of the field here, allowed to run as the Cherries get themselves back into their five-man defence when they don't have the ball. I think we're going to see Jack Cole back in a minute. We are, he's just taken his yellow bib off. He's coming on for Forrest shortly. Ball's on the far side, the right. Down that far right touchline, Nico Williams not able to get forward in the second half to as much effect as he did in the first. And Forrest at the moment can't find a way to pass their way through or round Bournemouth. He's still got it, Williams over on the far side now, with Tavernier in front of him. Williams' is ball in is easily dealt with by Mepham. Ben Chilwell's equalised for Chelsea against West Ham, 1-1. Forrest have got it here with Worrell, inside right channel, Gibbs White, top of the box, trying to find a shooting opportunity, passes it straight to Lewis Cook, and now it's with Fredericks to break out down this right-hand side. Fredericks has got Lodi in, pop the shoot. Well, in the middle, can he get him? Side, no. Tavernier couldn't find him oh. with the ball. If he could have got it in front of him, he was in on goal, Tavernier. Forrest turned it around quickly. Lodi having just steamed back to try and put pressure on Fredericks is now trying to turn Forrest round in the other direction. 16 minutes to play at the City Ground on BBC Radio Solent. Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth 2. Ball over on the far side of the right. Awanyi had his shirt held by Lloyd, Lloyd Kelly, but referee Oliver allows play to go on. Points for the advantage. McKenna again has to go backwards to Steve Cook playing as the defensive anchor in the midfield three. Kriate is... Uh, doubled over again in the centre circle, I don't know if he's picked up a recurrence of that problem in the first half. The ball's with the eights, before it comes to Gibbs White, laid off to a one you just outside the penalty area, now around the outside to Nico Williams, not a great ball, drives him wide, Williams still has it by the corner flag, cross swung in towards a one you too high for him, Fredericks again is there to head it away for the Cherries, really has had a good half, now Worrell, they shout shoot, but instead he clips it in, breaks down on the edge of the box, Smith was there, Mepham too, they've smuggled it away, and here's Ryan Christie, Carrying it for Bournemouth up to halfway, looking around at the moment for options, has nothing at all. So Gary O'Neill points him on towards the touchline, and then Christie wins a free kick. Excellent, had absolutely nowhere to go, nothing on, and turns straight back into Lodi and gets a yellow card as well for that. I don't think he knew Lodi was there, you know. I think he thought he was turning back into space, but that, as it's worked out, we do win the free kick. Only thing is, is I think he's okay, isn't he? Yeah, and he's just winded or whatever it is by that collision. You're right, I don't think he did. He just turned it back and Lodi was trying to close him down at such a rate that he ended up just walloping him in the chest. Here comes the change for Forrest and it is going to be Fiate who is coming off now, but we thought he was going to be replaced by Lewis O'Brien earlier. It's actually going to be Jack Colback this time who will come on. So Fiate scored the goal that Forrest got on their way with after 33 minutes, an excellent header from a corner. Doubled by Brennan Johnson's penalty on the stroke of half time. Cherries, though, changed formation at half time. Brought on Fredericks for Zamora, and through Billing and Solanke, cancelled out that 2 0 advantage, and we're level at 2 2 with 14 minutes to play. And Cherries still showing bright stuff going forward, though. Yeah, they are, and I'm just thinking about Fredericks's performance here. I mean, if he could make another goal, that probably makes him man of the match, you know. We're just a half under him. Well, we wait and see. Maybe he can even get one. Well, Gary O'Neill showing a bit of adventure here. He's saying we've got a free kick halfway inside the forest half yes. of the field. Send them all forward. Yes, you get the centre halves forward. You've got lads at the back who can sprint as quick as their lads. That's no problem. They're going forward. 
Referee Oliver is pointing to his watch to tell Bournemouth to get on with it here. Tommy Elphick, uh, sorry, Sean Cooper's making all sorts of tic-tac hand gestures to the attackers on the edge of the box. Centre halves are forward as well. Here it comes from Lewis Cook. They didn't exactly rush that one. Driven towards the penalty spot, won by Steve Cook with a header away for Forrest. Now Tavernier tussling with Colback, who's just come on. Tavernier's under a bit of pressure here, facing the halfway line, going back towards his own goal. Did really well. Dribbled his way out of trouble and finds Lerma. Now Lerma to the left-hand side, Billing's got it. Tavernier's now suddenly in an attacking position. Billing on the left foot. Oh, he cannoned it straight against the first man, Morrell. Still Billing. Oh, Tavernier is everywhere. He's having to spin out on the far touch line to keep that ball alive. And Cherry still have possession well inside the forest half of the field. Back to halfway now. Yeah, he's unlucky, Phil Billy. He, couldn't, he was trying to put Tavernier in, but they just couldn't get an angle on the ball. Still got possession on our own play. Tavernier's work rate continues to be incessant. Yeah. If it goes to Chris Metham in the heart of the Cherries' defence, 12 and a half minutes to play. Bournemouth pulling it back to 2-2 here with the City Ground. Many of you might be listening in on Bournemouth Seafront, watching a bit of the air show today, if you are. Thanks for taking us with you. Well, I was out there yesterday watching the planes, spotting the planes. Yeah, very interesting. With his telescope out. All back on the halfway line with the Cherries again. Now Christie over on the left-hand side, spinning away towards the touchline for Bournemouth. Tavernier's with him, but Christie with this more roaming role in the second half since the change to three at the back. Now Cook to Smith, out to this near side, where Fredericks wants it on the touchline and gets it. Still has it. A little one-two with Christie, but the return ball from Christie was asking plenty of Fredericks, who nodded it on beyond his man, claimed he was then balked, and some clever defending from Steve Cook stepping over it. And it's through to the goalkeeper. Yeah, one or two things there that... I'm not sure that he's onside if he gets there. Ball over the top for a one-year, but that's going to be too strong. And Neto, the Cherries keeper, is out to the left edge of his box to claim it. A one that was a great run, attracted it. He went back deep and broke the offside trap, but the ball was too firm. Well, he did score a one year in his, uh, one of his appearances so far. As we say, 20 odd goals for Union Berlin last season. Good strike rate. 25 years of age. The ball given away by the Cherries in the centre of the field. That was poor, and it's Worrell who has it. Now Yates, halfway inside the Cherries half. To the left, Gibbs White plays it behind Lodi, coming forward from left back. Across comes Fredericks to put pressure on him. Back down the line, it comes to Yates again. He's faced by Ryan, Frederick, uh, Ryan Christie. Too many Ryans. Yates, Fredericks, Christie, they're everywhere. Now over to the far side it goes. Saving private. He's not playing. Back to the side it goes, the far side it goes again, and Tavernier's nicked it away. Can he take on his man round the outside? Worrell stood firm there. And Tavernier again with a great injection of pace from a standing start wins a throw. Well, the, the difference this time is he hasn't got Teori up against him, has he? You know, he can get it, he can break and drive on as much as he wants. Wouldn't be surprised me if he, if he gets in behind at one more stage. Well, the Cherries might have gone 421 minutes without a Premier League goal until Phil Billing had r hit that rasping drive into the back of the net, but they've given an excellent account of themselves so far. I wonder if Gary O'Neill was throwing the teacups at half-time. He did spend pl plenty of time in a Harry Redknapp dressing room where a few teacups, I'm sure, flew. Cherries have won it back over on the far side. Lerma's got it now. Driving towards the left... Oh, sorry, Solanke's got it. Driving towards the corner of the penalty area. And then again, Forrest suddenly had four red shirts in front of him. And it's cleared away by Lodi up to halfway where Awanyi holds it up under pressure from Mepham. Good hustling, though. Mepham and Lewis Cook have won it back. Excellent work by Meps. You have to say he's caught the eye again today for me. Yep, he's had another good game dealing with things that have been in and around him. And sometimes in the live game, it's sometimes hard to get an idea on who's lost their man for set pieces and things. We only get one look at it usually. Or yeah, quick, well, I've a had a couple, of, a couple of looks at that corner, in, and I think Jeff won't be too, ha too happy with his contribution. Not like him, of course, usually the first there with a header. Into the last 10 minutes on BBC Radio Solent, still Wolves 1, Southampton nil at Molyneux in the Premier League. I think Saints fans thought they were going to win the league after beating Chelsea uh, in midweek. And, of course, it's Pompey 2, Peterborough 1 in League 1, a brace from Dane Scarlett in that game. Both live with us on our other channels. All the reaction to come with Jordan between 5 and 6. We'll hear from management and players from all of those games. And, of course, it all goes on our Twitter at Solent Sport as well. Leeds are on the comeback trail as well at Brentford. It's now 3-2 in Brentford's favour in West London. McKenna has it. Every time McKenna gets it, there's a member of Forest staff sat in front of me here who puts his hands on his head every time McKenna gets it. And almost every time McKenna has gone backwards with the ball. Forrest have it over on the right, 30 yards from the Bournemouth goal. Cherry's defending the end away to our left, the Trent end. Ball out to this left-hand side, this time McKenna does go forward, the experienced Scotsman. Lodi coming across the field, he has to go sideways. 
Still Forrest, 25 to 30 yards from the Bournemouth goal. Gibbs White looks up and thinks about delivering a ball into the box, which he does now. Then he Yates takes it down nicely, but still out to the left edge of the box. Then it comes back again. Gibbs White still has it. This is a very patient build-up. There's a bit of space here for Worrell. Thought about a shot, then thought better of it. Knocks it to the right. Chance for Williams. Gets it onto his left foot. Into the box. Lots there in red. Plenty there in black. They all missed it. Comes out to the left. Lodi keeps it in. That cannons against Fredericks. Loops up into the sky. Adam Smith was brave. Two players with their eye on the ball. That might have hit Fredericks in the mush. But either way, Bournemouth have broken out down this near side and Solanke holding off Cole back at the moment. Can Solanke get it out from under his feet? Got a bit of free kick there. Yeah, Cole back had hold of Solanke's arm. Free kick to the Cherries on the byline. He does, he's done so well, Solanke. He's getting, as he gets older, he's getting cl cleverer too. He knows when the ball's got to be held up. He knows when he's going to draw a foul. Anthony coming on. Yep, attacking change, some fresh legs for the Cherries in one of the wide positions, maybe one of the wing-back roles here. I mean, Tavernier again has run himself into the ground. Jaden Anthony about to enter proceedings as that's played down this near side, the Cherries right. Seven and a bit minutes to play, 2-2. Two -two. Forrest from two up, peg back. That change coming up very shortly. Final instructions being issued by the Cherries coaching staff. Brentford four leads two now. Uh, Brian and Bumo have scored to restore Brentford's comfortable goal, two-goal margin. Cherries have got it over on the far side at the moment in the forest half of the field. Billing, support down the left side again from guess who? Tavernier whips the ball in, he'll win a corner. Once again, over on that far side, the Cherries left. Yeah, Anthony, surely they'll get him on for this. They're going to wait, actually, as the uh, Cherries set up this corner. Away to the far side again, Chris Metham, Lloyd Kelly coming forward, Smith and Fredericks head back towards the halfway line, Forrest about to make another change. As we stand by to see this. He's not going to get on before the corner. No, he's not. No chance. Here comes the corner there, Tavernier. Again, those Cherry supporters away to our right. I've got a grandstand view of this. Into the near post, Lerma gets there, he missed it. Again, it skimmed past everybody and out to this near side where Christie dives in rather with a challenge there on Lodi. Uh, Fans want a yellow card, just a free kick from referee. Oliver. I have to say, Chris, I thought Jefferson should have got a better head. It, it landed right on him. He got a flash on it, but nowhere near. Needed a real 50p head on it, in right into the top corner, but didn't even get a glance. Well, that challenge from Ryan Christie was his last action. He's been replaced by Jaden Anthony, and the change here for Forrest sees Brennan Johnson come off to be replaced by the former Watford man, Emmanuel Dennis. Another one of their big money summer signings, having been relegated with Watford. Got his way back to the Premier League immediately, the Nigerian. So an extra striker on for Steve Cooper, or a fresh legs up front, I should say. Jaden Anthony's gone over to the left-hand side, by the way. Here come Forrest on the attack immediately. Right-hand side, Nico Williams, right corner of the era, driven into the box. Headed clear by Lewis Cook for the Cherries, and back towards the halfway line. We've got exactly Ooh. five minutes remaining at 2-2. Two -two. Nearly nicked that to <laughs> Would have put him in on goal. Charlie's fans, I think, would have taken a draw today. That was the general feeling. Yeah, I, know would have done. I would, yeah. Certainly at 2-0 down at half-time, we would have done. As Worrell plays it over to the right-hand side again. The City ground almost full silent just for a moment. As they reflect on their team, having given away a healthy advantage. Kiefer Moore just starts to go and do some final limbering up. Maybe if the Cherries are going to try and close it down and try and get a point. Excellent anticipation from Adam Smith there to win it. Driven across the field, Anthony gets a little head on it, which just... Phil Bill, Phil Bill look he's, like he's done to me, needs to come off. Took a knock earlier, didn't he? Quite a heavy knock in that challenge with Kriate. And Forrest have run it out of play on the far side. They're right inside Bournemouth territory. A lot of hard-working performances. Lewis Cook, another one, another uh, all-action performance today. Yeah, been, been lots of them sort of performances that we got against Wolves, no doubt about that. Tavernier takes the throw down that far left-hand side. And you have to say, when Fredericks come yeah. on, a bit of quality. Yeah, he's played, what, nearly half an hour the other night, Ryan Fredericks, he's played, you know, we've played a half here as well, so gaining in match sharpness all the time after his injury problems. Smith down the right side for the Cherries, Solanke will continue to chase on. Chelsea have come from behind, that's a poor clearance from McKenna, and Dom Solanke rolls in Jaden Anthony, who puts it into the back of the net! And Bournemouth with three and a half minutes on the watch may have completed a comeback that seemed a million miles away at half-time. They are 3-2 up. Anthony, just come on as a sub, slots it home. Well, that is quite incredible. 
Oh my goodness. I mean, you could see what Dominic was, was thinking. Short back pass, please knock it short. And that's precisely what happened. But the best thing about it, he could have kept going. He could have got close to the keeper and maybe scored himself. But he was un unselfish. Jane Anthony, sideways pass to him, knocks it through the keeper and into the bottom corner. Now, concentration, see it through. There's the back pass, we've just seen it again. It was McKenna who fluffed his lines completely. Solanke's pressure paid off. And as it was rolled across the penalty area, straight into the path of Anthony from about eight yards, confident. first time finish. Very confident, because he could have took another touch, he had that much time. Great finish, though, we'll have it the way it is. And that is a memorable moment for Jay Nantony, his first Premier League goal. Could it be a late winner? I mentioned, Willow, that Scott McKenna, every time he got the ball, the member of staff in front of me put their hands on their head. That member of staff left about two minutes before to go downstairs and do some work. He won't have seen that. It was McKenna, dropped an absolute ricket. Well. There's still two and a half minutes plus added time to come, but Bournemouth now have boxed themselves into a winning position from not only being on the ropes, but of having their mouth guard knocked out a couple of times in that first half. Yep. I have to say, there's a great character to keep going, though. The changes have helped. Solanke with a goal and an assist as that ball over the top is dealt with by Mepham. Forrester got a player down in the box. Michael Oliver waves him up. Then Mepham just takes a bit of a chance in the penalty area. Eventually hacks it clear. Uh, it's Emmanuel Dennis who's down. He's just come on as well. Didn't see what happened off the ball there, Willow, did you? No, I didn't. The one thing that was concerning me was when Meps went to clear it, he was up. He was going to put the, his boot right through it. And I've seen people come in and block them situations and get a penalty, but luckily he got his foot through it. They've got a th long throw coming in on this. Cookie it is. Steve Cook with a long throw in towards the penalty area, headed away by the Cherries. Back it comes to Steve Cook, 25 yards out, took an extra touch, and he's lost got it. Got a chance here. The Cherries have got the boys moving here with Anthony over halfway. Just driven a little bit wide, he goes past Nico Williams, Jaden Anthony driving on here, Tavernier to his left, still Anthony, knocks it into Tavernier, oh, blazes it wide, great counter-attack that would have finished the game, Tavernier off target. What a counter-attack it was, as you said. Be suggested. So we are. Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Apologies for the slight interruption. Uh, yeah, apologies for the slight interruption there, Clarkey. A bit of a power uh, intermission there, but we're back. So Phil Billing has come off. Good time to go, wasn't it? <laughs> While the substitution was being made, more on Billing off. The score is 3-2 to the Cherries, and here comes the all-important board with four minutes on it. Come on, just see it through. He's been fantastic this half. Cherries looking for their first Premier League away win of the season. They've already got their first Premier League away goals of the season. Forrest coming down the left-hand side with a Wanyi. Turned away from Smith, but Ryan Fredericks was double-teaming him towards the corner flag. Solanke helps it on. And now Kiefer Moore tries to hold it up. Colback snapping away by the touchline. Solanke would do just to get rid of it, but he's got rid of it towards a red shirt. Then Lerma, was he blocked off? No, says the referee as Yates tackled back. Uh, tackled back. Now Forrest down the right-hand side, and from Nico Williams, Mepham there with a one-year excellent header again from the Welsh international. Lewis Cook cleared, it's all got a bit frantic at the moment, Jerry's just booting it anywhere. Out to the left-hand side, oh, that'll do all day long, as Warwick plays it across the field, behind Lodi, and straight out for a Jerry's throw, thank you very much. Yeah, Justin Lerner just got a little cramped, conveniently. Cramped when you're 3-2 up in the dying seconds, it's such a painful condition, isn't it? Lerma's back to his feet pretty quickly, though, the Cherry's not messing around. I've never had cramp when I was playing. Not I've had you, it not when, when you're I, losing. When I got a bit older. I've had it while commentating. Really? Down this near side, Kiefer Moore throws himself to the ground, won't get a free kick for that, that was way too obvious. And ball with the deep inside the forest half with McKenna, who has to just again hack it up into the sky, rather aimlessly, Kiefer Moore nods it in field, but there's no one there in a black shirt. We've got two and a half minutes of added time to play at the city ground. Nottingham Forest two, Bournemouth three. Turned it right round from half-time. 
of the caretaker team who've been kicking and hitting every ball in this second half as Moore gives away a foul on halfway. Gary O'Neill, Sean Cooper and Tommy Elphick will have been hopping around everywhere in the technical area in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, I've been seeing them, they've worked so hard on and off the pitch that you can almost see it in sight, get this cross away. Nico Williams on the right-hand side, deep cross to the back post, McKenna heads it back across the penalty area, what a block in there as the shot came in, I don't know who got the block in, but as it was Dennis, I think, who had a snap effort at goal, there was a black shirt in the way and Cherry survived. I think it was going, the shot, it looked like the bottom corner to me. Still got time to go here. Here comes Cole back again into the final two minutes of added time now. 3-2 the Cherries lead. Forrest pouring it on. The cross into the box is chested down and away by Lloyd Kelly, the Cherries captain, who clears it long into the forest half of the field. Because the ball hasn't gone out. We haven't seen a replay yet of that block. Wouldn't be surprised if it was Lloyd Kelly again, Willow, clearing off the line the other night, remember. And it comes to the edge of the box again for the Forest, but Adam Smith this time is there to head it away. And Lodi wins it back on halfway with Lerma in pursuit. Bournemouth and everybody's still working hard, back behind the ball, Kiefer Moore on as a sub, is pressuring Worrell. Long ball again, diagonally deep, out comes Neto, punches it away, not a brilliant punch, runs loose, and one he drives it wide! Neto, with a get-out-of-jail card, framed and in bold lettering, as he made a bit of a haul of the clearance, and a one could not hit the target with a loose ball. Well, I'm sorry, but we've got lucky there. Paulix, you're being very polite. It was he's tried to pat it, hasn't he? It's like it like he just watch. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Steve he's Cook's doing in the there. way. It's chested down. It was a good header from McKenna. And as it came to a one year, about eight yards out, back to goal. He turned, caught it well. Anxious looks from the Cherries, but it flew wide of the post. Dom Solank is coming off for the last 30 seconds or so to be replaced by Jack Stacey. Well. Oh, well, I thought for a second there, I as did. Neto was coming out, I thought, oh, no. Well, I did too, but, but I'm thinking, just punch it away, he's never going to catch it. He, he, you know what foreign goalkeepers are like, they, don't, they tend to punch more than catch. But we got away with it. Oof, Neto made, got away with it. Still 30 seconds or so are going to be played here with the Cherries having made that substitution. 3-2 up. All the reaction to come from you and from Gary O'Neill and the Cherries players. It's at Solent Sport on Twitter, 3 on WhatsApp. Put Solent as the first word. Fredericks down the line to the right-hand side. Cole back, back to his goalkeeper, Henderson. We've played over the four minutes added on now. Michael Oliver with a couple of glances at his watch. Forrest might get one last chance to throw it long here. Lerma wins a good header on the halfway line. Forrester back on halfway. Another long look at the watch from referee Oliver. Still no full-time whistle. Great work from Anthony. Tracking back inside his own half. Run, Jaded, run with it. He doesn't need to run because Michael Oliver has blown the final yes. whistle. The booze around the city ground almost drowned out by the cheers of relief and joy from the travelling Cherry supporters seven days ago at this time of day. They were cursing a 9-0 defeat. Today they were 2-0 down at half-time and it looked like it was going to be another sorry Saturday afternoon. Step forward Phil Billing at 2-0 down with a 25-yard rasper into the top corner. 2-1. Dom Solanke, a spectacular hook over his shoulder from a corner, made it 2-2 on the hour. And then Jaden Anthony with his first Premier League goal on 87 minutes, calmly slotting home on the counter-attack after a Forest mistake. Credit to Gary O'Neill who changed personnel and changed the system at half-time and Bournemouth have their first Premier League away win of the season as well as their first goals away in the league. Full-time here, Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth 3.